Hey, good morning and welcome to Cornerstone, where we exist to love our God, to grow in our faith, and to serve each other. Thank you so much for being here this morning. This week we are starting a brand new series called Under God, and it's going to take us through the next four weeks, which actually lead us up into the presidential elections that are happening here in this country. So I'm excited to share that series with you in just a moment. But before we get to that time, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Cornerstone Kids and Crave Student Ministries, you every week, your lesson plans will continually be made available for you uh, on our Facebook page and also linked on our YouTube page as well if you're watching us on YouTube. We continue to, to uh, exist the generosity uh, of the givers here at Cornerstone. We want to continue to encourage your generosity and your, and your financial support of this ministry. And there's a couple different ways that you can financially support us. And those links are down below. So thank you for your continued support of our ministry. Our Bible studies, our men's Bible study is happening this Wednesday. There is a shift. Usually it's every other Monday. Uh, this week it's going to be on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here at the church. We made some adjustments because of the holiday on Monday. And ladies, you are meeting every Thursday at 7.30. So continue to, be, to pour into that, to be encouraged by that. We hope to see you there. So before we get into this brand new series under God, let us begin with a time of prayer leading into a time of worship this morning. God, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone that is tuned in, that is watching this morning. And God, I pray that we are ready to listen and ready to make some practical application to our lives. And God, we thank you for the freedoms that we have in this country. God, now let us use those freedoms and, and let us um, continue to reach out to this world around us. So God, bless this time that we have. Bless this time of worship that we're going to go into. In your name, amen.
firm foundation that I will pour my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I All right, so we are starting a new series called Under God, and the title for today's message is simply One Nation. And we're going to use the surroundings that we have around us, the, 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 the context of what is happening in our country, which is that presidential election, which is happening in just a few short weeks. And there's a lot of emotions that surround this election. You know, I think back four years ago, the last election, when it was Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, and a lot of people back then were saying, well, this is the most important election of our generation. You know, and then this year, this cycle, people are saying the same thing now with, with Trump versus Biden. Hey, this is going to be the most important election of our, of our generation, of our time, maybe in American history. And who knows? Who knows if it is? Who knows if it isn't? But the point is, there's a lot of emotions from both sides of the aisle surrounding this election cycle surrounding these elections and this is not by, by just putting a little uh, a little footnote here this is not a message on a political statement at all and in fact you're not going to hear my political views you're not going to hear even who I support and who I don't support you're not going to go in, into any of that what I'm going to try to do this morning is remind us as believers as followers of Christ what our responsibility is during this time and to remind us of who we actually serve, we're going to talk about one nation, one nation under God. We are a nation uh, of believers, correct? So those, who, those of us who are believers in Christ, we serve together. We serve Almighty God. And we're going to go into what is our role, what is our responsibility. And over these next few weeks, over the next four weeks actually, including today, we're going to be talking about a number of different subject matters. And we're going to derive those topics by actually saying the Pledge of Allegiance. And each of these points is actually brought out of our Pledge of Allegiance. So if you know the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm going to say it here in just one moment. And I want you maybe to repeat it with me, but very simply this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, 
indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I want to bounce off the idea of one nation. See, we are called uh, to be a heavenly nation, to be representatives uh, of Christ here on earth. We are followers of Christ. We are supposed to be emulating Christ on this earth. We're supposed to be his hands, supposed to be his feet, supposed to show compassion towards people, to, to show people mercy, to tell people about, about God the Father and about Jesus, his son. That is our role. That is our responsibility here on earth. So when we talk about one nation, uh, we, are, we want to address what does that mean as believers? How do we become one nation of believers? And the next week we're going to address how to live under God in a culture that is increasingly becoming hostile towards the things of God. And I, I'm excited to talk about that because that's been a big part of I feel about our culture. It seems to be not only more divisive, but there seems to be increasing hostility uh, in, towards the things of God. And we're going to talk about that, what it means to be under God in this country. Week three, we're going to talk then about how we are united, we stand, and how we stand united spiritually, even though we may have different ideas politically. And, and with that going into week four, which is actually going to be the week of our election here in this country, we're going to talk about liberty and justice for all. And we're going to change that a little bit and talk about grace and truth, liberty and justice being, being grace and truth. And how do we live with grace without compromising the truth of God's word? See, I understand that, that, that politics are, are something that, that not a lot of people like to talk about. The old cliche, cliche thing that at work is you don't discuss uh, religion, you don't discuss politics, right? But if there, if there ever was a safer place or should be a safer place to talk about politics, it should be the church. We should be able to have open conversations with each other uh, about political uh, matters. And I think it's very important that we, as we start this off, kind of just address some elephants in the room, so to speak. I understand the audience that I'm speaking to today. I understand that there are some uh, of you that, that, um, that are going to are gonna support one, one presidential candidate. And I have others that I know are going to support one, the other candidate. And again, this is not a message to talk about who is right and who is wrong. Everybody's got to make their beliefs based on their own, uh, on their own understanding of, of, the, of, the, um, of the principles, all, uh, own understanding of, of the ideologies of these two candidates. And you've got to make your own decision, your God-led decision on those things. I'm not trying to influence that. What I'm trying to get, what I hope to get out of this is an understanding that no matter what side of the fence you may be on, if you lean left, if you lean right, if you're kind of more centric in your thoughts, wherever you might fall, we have a responsibility as believers to be united in our message of hope and our message of Christ. And that's what I want to really kind of pound in today, the understanding that, yes, we are under God and we are one nation under God. You know, some people say, well, it doesn't matter who you vote for. There's no hope anyways. In this country, we're kind of going to hell in a handbasket. Everything seems to be going down. You know, I, I find some people are not so much supporting a candidate, but they're voting for the other guy in defiance of the other candidate. You know, there's so many people have to, there's so many different ways of how they're making determinations of who they're voting for. But the bottom line and the point again of, of addressing this in a series is for us to really get to understanding of what is our, again, responsibility. What should we be focusing, we being believers in Christ, what should we be focusing on during this time? I, I also want to say that I am, I'm very, I would consider myself to be a very patriotic. I, I'm, a, I'm a red, white, and blue person, a guy. I, I fly the flag outside of my home. I have deep and utter respect for not only our flag, but, but those service members who, who have served, those veterans and those active service members who have, who have served this country, uh, the, who have died in defense of its freedoms. And, and I want to give utmost respect to them. I, I honor those who have fought for us, those who have served our country. I'm blessed. I know that I am blessed to live in this country. It is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I thank God 
for allowing me to be here and to celebrate and be able to, to, to indulge in the freedoms that we have here in this country because I do not take it for granted. I do not take it for granted uh, the freedoms that I have here. None of us ever should. We should be thankful for the unlimited opportunities, the, the freedom to worship freely, the, the freedom to start businesses, the, the freedoms to have kids and, and, and to raise our families. And, and, and although I, I love our nation, and I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, I also want to start off by saying this. In God's eyes, America is not the promised land. In God's eyes, America is not the promised land. And while we may be strong and powerful and have blessings, we are not God's only or His favorite nation. So we're going to get into that this morning. We're going to talk about three things, uh, three thoughts on our mission as Christ's ambassadors and what is our responsibility here in this country. And we're going to get into that this morning. As believers who live in this country, our highest calling is not to defend freedom of speech, but to help people find freedom in Christ. And we need to understand and recognize and embrace that reality. See, we are not just Americans. We are ambassadors from heaven. I'm going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And starting in verse 17, then we're going to skip down to verses 19 and 20 this morning. It says this, and God has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, and though God were making his appeal through us. What is an ambassador? We, we use that title. It's a title that not only we use in the Bible, but we have ambassadors in this country. What is an ambassador? What a basic definition. An ambassador is a highest, the highest ranking diplomat sent to represent from one nation to another. So in most countries around this world, we have United States American ambassadors who are the highest ranking diplomat uh, for our country in those respective countries. And, and, and they meet with the, the leadership of that country. They handle the, the affairs of, of American nationals, American citizens that might be in that country. So we are, and you are, an ambassador sent from God from heaven to earth. We are Christ's ambassadors to this earth. I'll re repeat this with me. I am an ambassador by God sent from heaven to earth. I am an ambassador. Say that. I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador. I have a responsibility. I have been sent and delegated by God to represent his son here on this earth. So again, we're going to talk about three thoughts on what it means to be the ambassadors of Christ. Number one, this morning, you are not elected by people, but chosen and appointed by God. You were not elected by people, but chosen and appointed by God. John 15, 16 says this, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. In our life, I think a lot of us struggle with what is our purpose? What am I doing on this earth? And if you become a follower of Christ, then that purpose is, is defined by you through God, through, through the Holy Spirit who will guide and direct you. So the Bible gives us the Great Commission, which is to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. If the Bible just gave us that directive, that is more than enough to show us and to tell us what we should be doing in our lives. But the Bible goes into much more depth than that. And it lets us know that each one of us, as we are uniquely and wonderfully created and made, each one of us has a path of life in this, in this life that, will, that, that we, should, we should strive to, to follow and to take. And if, if we do that, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, and go back to this point, we, we are not elected by people, but we are cho chosen and appointed by God. See, some of us have to, to really think about that for a moment. Some of us maybe have struggled with trying to figure out who we are. What's our purpose in life? What am I supposed to do for, for work, for a career? What am I supposed to do with, with, for a family? You know, what, what is my purpose for being? And as believers, we, we come to an understanding that our mission, we are chosen and, and, and appointed by God. 
And as followers of Christ, that is what we need to remember. We, we can't be distracted by, by, the, by what the world tells us or the world tells us that we should be doing in our lives. See, you are not who others say you are. You are who God says that you are. You are called by God to be His ambassadors on this earth. You are not elected by people, but you are chosen and appointed by God. See, someone needs to hear this this morning. You are not, again, what others say you are, and and even sometimes what you think you are. See, we all have that inner voice, right, that that, that yells at at ourselves. And we make a a dumb decision in our life, our inner voice says, well, you just, you screwed up again. You messed up again. I can't believe you keep on failing. Or maybe you have audible, you have other people telling you uh, that you're surrounded with and say, why'd you mess up? You screwed up your life. You screwed up that. If we allow those, those external and internal voices to start to, to forge and to dictate into our lives, that's going to cause chaos within our thinking. We need to remind ourselves that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and God has elected us and appointed us as a chosen people. And we are appointed by God. You are called, you are equipped, and you are appointed to be His ambassadors. We've just talked about what an ambassador is. An ambassador is a high, high calling. To be named an ambassador for this country and to another country is an extremely high calling. And you should be proud of that calling. Just think about it. If you got a call and, and, and the president says, hey, I want you to be an ambassador to, to this country, to that country. Man, even if you didn't want the job, what an honor it is to be considered for that. As a believer, we have the utmost honor to represent Christ, to represent Christ in this world, to be his hands, to be his feet, to be examples of his love for other people. And what a tremendous responsibility that we need to remember, we need to focus on sometimes. We are not elected by people, right? We are elected and chosen, appointed by our God. What is your God dream? Let me say that again. Each one of us, you know, as we become believers, and maybe you're on the fence right now. Maybe I'm talking to believers this morning. Maybe you're someone that's never had that time and place in your life where you accepted Christ into your heart. So this, what I'm, what I'm speaking about, is kind of foreign to you. So let me catch you up a little bit. When you are a believer, when you accept Christ into your heart, your heart gets transformed, gets, gets renewed, and you are given a purpose. That void that you're feeling in your life right now gets filled with the Holy Spirit. So if that's you this morning, that's where you need to start, by surrendering yourself to God. And let me tell you what happens after that, going back to this point here. You begin to have a a, a God dream. I call it a God dream. It's a purpose that He's laid upon your heart. See, I I know we all have our own dreams about our futures. Uh, We have dreams about our families. We have dreams about maybe what our career should be. But what is your God dream? What are you being called to do? See, a lot of us think of a calling as just someone maybe called into, into full-time ministry, being a pastor, you know, something like being a missionary, doing something like that. And that's absolutely one of the callings that God has laid upon people's heart, which He's obviously laid upon my heart. But it isn't just being called to being a pastor or being a missionary, right? It's being called into and, and whatever service, whatever ministry that He has laid on our hearts. We have people out here that, that are called to, to teach, we have a need right now in this church for, 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 for continuing to grow our teachers and to grow different teams here at Cornerstone. And maybe you have a skill set that you've been sitting on and that you haven't re- and they haven't talked to us about. We would love to get you plugged in and connected into a, to some sort of ministry. Because what is your God dream? So, and again, it's not this. It's not what you think you might be qualified for. We could say, "Well, I never went to Bible college. You know, I, I I read God's word sometimes, but I'm not. I don't really have it memorized. I don't know what good, what help I could be." No, no, it's not. It's not what you think you're qualified for. But what is your dream? Have you ever considered it? What is my role? What is my responsibility? What is my mission and my ministry here, not only in this church, but in this world? Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we had a missionary here in person at the church uh, from Man and Worldwide, and he was sharing, Craig Alsop, and he was sharing with us that he and his wife were already, if, 
really deep into their careers. Uh, he was a therapist. Uh, she worked for a, for a college. You know, and they were already deep into their careers. They were starting a family together, and then God and they had no. Uh, they didn't go to Bible college. Um, they didn't. Have, they didn't have any formal um, um, Bible training, so to speak. But they were called out of that into the ministry that they're now running. And the point is, you can be at different facets of your life. Uh, you know, maybe you're in school right now. Maybe you've been out of school for 40 years. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what stage of life that you are in. You still have a purpose as a believer that you are appointed to be, uh, to be God's ambassador. You are appointed by God. I think of, of many examples in Scripture where, 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 where people were called and, and, and they, they had to fight maybe what the, their own perceptions of what they should be doing. I go back to example of Moses. So if you remember Moses, uh, Moses was called by God and God called, spoke, literally spoke to Moses through a burning bush. And he told him, I want you to go back to Egypt and I want you to set my people free. I want you to lead my people out of bondage in, in Egypt. Did you remember Moses' response to him? Moses said, you can't send me. I am not equipped to they do that. Uh, I, I don't have, I don't have the, the speaking skills to be able to go to the, to the king and, and to demand, uh, to the Pharaoh and demand him release the people of Israel. God, you've got the wrong person. See, Moses was fighting the, appointed, the appointedness that God had placed upon him. And it went back and forth. This didn't happen just once. It happened several times. And then finally Moses surrendered to himself and said, God, I'll do what you want me to do. And we kind of all know how that turns out. There's other examples of that. Do you remember David? As a boy, when David went to visit his brothers and they were fighting the, the Philistines and that, that giant Goliath was intimidating the people of Israel or mocking the God of Israel. And David said and felt the calling to go and face this giant and what did people around him say? What did those voices around him say? You're too small for that. You're too little for that. There's no way that you can defeat this giant. And David says, I have the God of Israel behind me. I'm not worried about what people are saying. I know that I've been appointed and called to do this. And what did he do? He destroyed and killed that giant. That's a great example of someone that has a lot of voices going on saying, don't do this, don't do that. But he knows, he knew what his purpose was. He knew what his mission was because God had given him a focus. God had given him a dream. Remember Paul going to the New Testament now. Do you remember how he was arrested and he was beaten? Pretty much wherever he went, he was, he was, he was arrested or thrown into jail. And, 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 but it didn't matter. And all those examples, they followed their dreams. They followed the calling. They followed to being the ambassadors the way that they should. So you are not an ordinary Christian, but you are an ambassador called and appointed by God. Let me say that again. No one watching, listening to me this morning, none of us are ordinary. You might say, I don't think I have any special gifts, special talents, special, special abilities. But I'm telling you, as a believer in Christ, you are not an ordinary Christian. You are an ambassador who's been called and appointed by God. You were not elected by people, but you have been chosen and appointed by God. So building off the point that we are not ordinary Christians, but we are ambassadors and we have been appointed by God. Point number two this morning, again, you are not a regular person. You are a royal priest of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. You see, as believers, as followers of Christ, what First Peter has just read to us and just told us here is that each one of us, uh, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are, I love it, it says we are God's special possession. We are uniquely and wonderfully made and we have been appointed with a purpose in this life. We are not who we think we are. We are who God says that we are. And we are to declare the praises of Him, of God, who called us out of darkness into His wonderful light. And, and when we're called into a wonderful light, we are also called to have a spiritual influence on those around us. Because it's really what the priest, and the definition of what we're talking about, royal priesthood, we are to be spiritual influencers to this world around us, in this community around us, in this country around us. 
We're not called to be a regular person. We're called to be a royal priest of God. You know, for example, if I'm over, you know, if I've been called maybe into a hospital to pray with somebody or, or maybe to make it more simple, you know, maybe we're having a dinner here at the church, right? And, and when it's time to pray, a lot of people may be looking at me saying, oh, as a pastor, you should be the one that leads us in prayer. I have to tell you, I, I have a calling in my life, absolutely, to be a pastor, to minister to people, but each one of us have the ability to be spiritual influencers and each one of us has the ability to, to, to pray and, and to read God's word and to tell people about Jesus. We all have that responsibility and maybe you haven't been called to full-time ministry. Maybe you haven't been called to leave your job and, and to become a pastor or to leave this country maybe and to become a missionary in some foreign field. But all of us have been called to be spiritual influencers, to be ambassadors, to be a royal priest of God to tell people about His Son Jesus, to tell them about the saving knowledge of Jesus. You are chosen, you are called, you are equipped. You are a priest of the Most High God. We need to be reminded of that. We need to not be distracted by, by this world around us and just be so stuck in our ways and think, well, this is not my responsibility or this is not resp my responsibility. I'm not responsible for telling people about Jesus. That's the responsibility of a pastor. Well, I'm, that's not my responsibility to take on this ministry of this church. That's what I don't think my calling is. All of us have a responsibility to be spiritual influencers in not only in our, in our own lives, in our communities, but also in our own local church. My call to you this morning, what is your responsibility? What has God called you to do? How are you being a spiritual influencer to people around you? How are you supporting in, in your family? How are you being a spiritual leader? In your church, in this church, what are you doing to grow in your faith and to encourage others in the growth of their faith? Because that's what we have. Going back to 1 Peter, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are God's special possessions so that we may declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into this, His wonderful light. So what are, you are not a regular person. You are a royal priest of God. So what are you doing about it? Number three this morning, you never represent yourself, you always represent Christ. First Peter chapter 2, now verse 2 says this, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they always accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. See, as believers, everything that we do in our lives is a representation of Christ Himself. Even the word Christian, we are little Christ, little Christos. We are, should be living examples of what Christ did on this earth, the way that He showed love and mercy towards others, how He showed kindness towards others. That is what we should be striving for. That is what we should be doing here on this earth. We are representations of Him. We, never, we don't represent ourselves. We are representations of Christ. We are bought through the blood of Christ. As believers, we are, we are bought through His blood. We are not to live towards our own, to our own dreams, our own goals, but to align our goals and dreams to what God's goals and dreams for us are. That is how we should be living our life. There's nothing regular about you. We just talked about this. You are not a regular Christian. There's nothing regular about you. Even though you might not be called into to full time ministry, each one of us has a calling in our lives to live our lives according to his, his plan. But in all of those plans, we are to share the gospel to everyone. We are to be representations of Christ and to tell people about his love, about his mercy, about the saving knowledge that we have through Christ Jesus. Nothing regular about you. You represent Christ. You are our ambassador. That's the highest calling, man, that you could have is to be ambassador for Jesus. So as we get into this world around us, and we start seeing this world maybe get darker and darker, and it's not just because it's an election year. There are a lot of crazy things that are happening in our world around us. And this election is just one of many, many things that have happened to us in the year 2020. But as the, as the world around us seems to be getting darker, that is when we see the light of Jesus begin to shine brighter and brighter. And there has never been a greater opportunity 
for us as representatives of Christ to really start to represent him to the world, this dark world around us. And our light, as the world gets darker, our, uh, darker, our light gets brighter. And as we're approaching and we're in this season right now of this election season, and we've talked about the many different types of emotions that are happening and, and, and to people around us, and maybe you're going through a series of emotions. You know, maybe you're one of those that says, if this person gets elected, man, I don't know how we're going to continue to live in this country. And some others will say, well, this other guy gets elected, man, everything we have is going to be lost. I mean, there's, there's, there's camps on both sides that are, are fearful about what is going to happen in the next few weeks. And I'm not gonna be, be I'm not gonna uh, gonna say I haven't had those same type of emotions. I think any of us who follow politics in any sense um, will have some some fear and maybe some uncertainty. But here is the thing that I try to remember myself to keep myself focused on what I need to be focused on is this: God already has a plan. God has a a, a fine plan in place already for what His will for for our world is to be. And I have confidence in my God. Or maybe I don't have confidence in some politicians, right? But I have utmost confidence in my God. And I trust in my God. I trust in His plan for me and for my family and for my country and for this world. I trust in God. I am not a, a regular person. I am called to represent Christ. We need to remember that during this time. During this time, as a country, we might feel divided and your families, you might feel divided. But we cannot be divided when it talks about the priesthood of believers. We can have and we do have people that have differing political views that attend church. Right now, someone watching this with you this morning, maybe in a different household, right? Maybe in the same household, they have a different political view than they are. But we are united through our relationship with Jesus, we're united, united in the fact that we have a responsibility to tell people about Jesus. We need to make sure, church, we need to make sure that we, sh we show and demonstrate unity, even if we have differences of opinions. Even if we have differences of opinions. I'm going to tell you something. God was on his throne. Obviously long before you or I were born. Uh, and long before uh, this country was even established. Right? And long before this election was ever going to take place. God has a perfect plan in place. We need to trust that. But while we are trusting that, we need to demonstrate that we are one nation. Under God, we are a nation of, of believers. I'm talking about the family, the priesthood of believers. And we need to, we need each other and we need to depend on Christ. Again, if the world grows darker, the light of Jesus can shine brighter. So this, mor this morning, we are not just Americans, if you happen to even be American, right? We're not just Americans. We are ambassadors of the Most High God. We are not just to defend our freedom of speech, but the freedom in Christ, the freedom that we have in Christ. We are a chosen people, a holy nation, a royal priest passing through this earth, bound towards an eternal heavenly home. It doesn't matter if you're American, Algerian, Australian, wherever you might be from. As believers, we are united and we have a name that is above every other name. We, have, we are one nation of believers under God. We are loyal to our country, but we, may, but we do worship a different king. Let's bow our heads this morning. I hope these words have been words of encouragement to you. Maybe you're someone that's experienced a lot of anxiety and, and fear about this coming next few weeks, this coming election. And, and I pray for you. I pray for God's peace and God's comfort to you. But believe it, this morning, I want to remind you that we need to be united as believers in Christ, as a priesthood of believers, as a nation under God. We need to be united in our message to the world around us. And that message it is not Republican or, or Democrat or, or Libertarian or whatever you might vote politically. Our message is that Jesus is the King of Kings. And our message 
is that whatever we are experiencing in this world, we need forgiveness of our sins through Christ Jesus. And that should be our united message to this world around us. We are one nation under God. And we need to remember that as a nation, we need to be united in our message of hope, a message of love, a message of grace and mercy that God has given us through Christ Jesus. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you again for allowing us to be here. Bless this time. Bless this new study, God, as we go into this series and the next few weeks, next three weeks now, God, that we talk about one nation under God, that we understand what our role, what our responsibility is as believers. And we embrace that role and we are united together, God. We are not divided as the world may want us to be, God, but that we are united in our message of hope in Jesus. God bless us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be here this morning. Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I pray again this message this series is going to be a blessing to you. Uh, I want to continue to, to lift you up in prayer myself. And if you want to connect with us, please go to our connection link, which is listed down below. We would love to, to pray with you and pray for you. If you're experiencing something in your life right now that you need some prayer about, please, please let us know. Until next time, love, grow, and serve.